Hi, everyone. Today, I'm here with Angelica Lourdes-Core, Managing Partner and Creative Director of DDNYC. DDNYC is a creative design agency rooted in New York City, known for its pioneering approach to branding, product packaging, web design, and development across various industries. DDNYC has received several Clutch Awards, including Clutch Global, Clutch Champions, Top Web Design Company, and Top Corporate Brand Company. And additionally, they are recognized within our certification program as a top woman-owned business. As an experienced entrepreneur, Angelica is very involved with the startup scene in New York City, known for advising on social strategy, design, funding, user experience, and development for early stage and venture-backed startups. Angelica also advocates for small businesses and women in tech and leadership. Thank you so much for joining me today, Angelica. We're very excited to have you here. Agencies on Clutch could benefit from learning so much about your approach to business growth and the success you've seen at DBNYC. So excited to dive in and learn more about your growth story. Thank you very much, Katie. Happy to be here. Great. Um, so first off, you know, could you just share some key initiatives that are top of mind for DDNYC, you know, as we're going into uh, end of the fourth quarter or the first quarter here, um, you know, what are some of the big initiatives that you're focused on for growing your business this year? So as we are focusing on our four main lines of business, uh, web design, branding, uh, graphic design, and packaging, we're uh, looking at the roadmap for, for Q3 and 4 to start adding new lines of business, such as uh, an, uh, a defined 3D department. Uh, we're using a lot of 3D work already in a lot of our different lines of business, but we haven't defined that as an, um, a department to date, and it's something that's on our roadmap. For 2025, we're looking to add uh, possibly also production to our lines um, of business. A lot of our uh, clients are looking for fresh, unique content um, that is again used throughout their, their social, throughout their web um, interfaces and such. Currently, we've been uh, we've been bringing on vendors to do some of these uh, some of these tasks, but it's something we're looking to expand into in in 2024, Q3, 4, and 2025. Okay, great. So, you know, from that, it sounds like you're thinking, you know several months into the future and even into next year already. And so uh, as you're thinking about prioritizing those big initiatives, um, you know, tell us a little bit more around, you know, um, what that planning process looks like in terms of the preparation for some of those big levers. You mentioned like 3D design being top of mind as you're expanding. Um, yeah, how do, you, how do you think through kind of what those expansion opportunities look like that far into the future? We always say creativity and discipline. Um, so, um, you know, we, we know what our predictable flow is. Essentially, business has two parts, right? It has the predictable flow, and then we have um, the unpredictable, the bonus flow. Um, so to, to plan accordingly to the, to the demand, you really need to be 100% covered, I would say, on the predictable flow. If you're, mm -hmm. if, um, there, there cannot be a mistake there. Um, and this is something that we know and we have to be able to manage. Now, anything that's that's unpredictable, everything that's a bonus is is something that we have to be reactive to, of course, to some extent and adjust and, and be agile um, uh, for. But uh, ultimately, the most important thing is if there's any doubt that you cannot cover your predictable flow, I think you'll um, you know, uh, this is something you need to address probably immediately as an agency. Mm hmm. Love that insight. So really jumping off of that, another question is how do you prioritize between those immediate client demands of kind of what you articulated as that predictable uh, revenue stream and those more strategic actions aimed at agency growth? And can you share some examples of decisions you've had to make and sort of trading off between those two? Growth needs or client needs, clients always come first. Um, uh, Hard decisions I have had to make for the agency in the past uh, you know, twelve to 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 fifteen months, I would say, personal sacrifices. Um, uh, again, clients come first, so uh, 
it's uh, as a founder, as a managing director, I'm, uh, you know, um, my my uh, my job is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So uh, those are some of the decisions essentially as to uh, that that we've made. But um, I would say bef before you grow, you must always uh, again address your immediate client needs. Um, that that's that predictable flow. Um, where we have a very win-win mentality. So we're not trying to uh, win on the short term with a client. We're we're trying to build their business on the long term, um, and uh, and uh, even if uh, that means harder work today for 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 less, uh, you know, for for less of a uh, for a bigger result in the future. What techniques or tools do you employ to ensure that client work and the growth activities you're focused on receive? The attention you need day to day, and how do you how do you think about time management personally and for the business? I like to optimize um, all processes, so automate automation is definitely key. Um, uh, we we are uh, integrating new tools overall on project management. Um, as an agency that works with many different companies with many different processes, uh, we're, we're on every project management software um, as as an as an agency added to the the client's flow. So, uh, having that overview of all the different tools, uh, you know, we make the optimal decision for our internal processes um, uh, with quite a bit of uh, understanding of what the tools available in the in um, you know in the market are. So yeah, really looking for the most optimal tools, um, optimizing them to their full capacity, um, always uh, going the extra mile and, and learning new ways of optimizing. Um, you know, specifically your article on uh, studying funnels and seeing which funnels lead to big rewards. Um, it was very interesting, for example, you know, something that, uh, a lot of agencies are maybe not doing. They're just looking at the the and they're not deep diving into what funnel is actually bringing them um, results versus just top level clicks and such. So going the extra mile on all the tools and seeing how we can um, optimize them. You know, I think one of the most complex parts we hear from agency founders and owners is kind of level setting with their clients and getting aligned on expectations and even at times having to say no. And so what's your tip for other agency owners and leaders on gracefully handling those situations where you have to push back on client expectations? So setting expectations um, on the onset early on, I think is key to success in, a, in any client relationship. Um, uh, being very transparent is key. Um, leveling with a client in that sense. Um, being reasonable, but um, also understanding. So, um, you know, uh, we we pride ourselves on being very flexible with clients, but of course, within reason. Um, that win-win mentality I talked about earlier, uh, sometimes you may not get the additional scope today, but you will improve the client's business tremendously and they will forever be loyal to you as a result. Um, so this is the kind of considerations you have to make. Um, and sometimes you have to say no to yourself, not 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 just the client. Uh, but sometimes, of course, there comes a point where you have to draw the line also with the client. But if you have uh, had transparency and great communication throughout the process, nothing will ever come as a surprise um, and the client will really appreciate it. And sometimes uh, just picking up the phone call, uh, picking up the phone and giving uh, giving a call to the client, and something that mm. doesn't happen anymore that frequently because everything is scheduled, everything is Zoom calls, um, and that's and that's wonderful. But as an agency owner, um, having that rapport that um, if a client is having a, a, a tough time, they're having a hard meeting, and you know that your work is part of it, checking in on them and such. So this is where that you know that. Um, uh, that's how you build rapport and that's how you really build that trust. Mm -hmm. Not waiting for that to bubble up, but being proactive and reaching out and having those touch points, I think is, is such a great, um, you know, advice. And it's something that you don't often see, you know, especially as, as agencies uh, scale to a certain point that they have that, that regular connection to your point. 
everything scheduled on Zoom, so it can be hard to kind of find those those opportunities to really reconnect with the humans. That that is so core to any service business. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, human resources, I think what's really unique around growth in a in a service based agency business is that, you know, to scale your business, that often requires scaling your team and thinking about when to when to bring on additional resources. And so how do you think about as your, you know, you mentioned earlier, you're thinking into Q3, Q4, and even into 25, how do you think about scaling your team and capabilities to, you know, meet not just your current client needs, but also those future growth opportunities? Certainly. Projecting and modeling is key, not essentially similar to what I mentioned earlier, not really cutting corners and going that extra deep dive of projecting your flow, projecting the needs for the agency, understanding what is your predictive flow versus your unpredictive flow, making sure that you're 100% covered on, um, on what you know will happen, and then you can be reactive to the rest. Um, it's uh, it's very important. Uh, I think a lot of agencies, uh, it's hard to project the flow for an agency period. Um, and uh, as a result, uh, many agencies probably fail to project altogether. Um, finding mechanisms that make sense to your specific services, to your specific um, capabilities, and uh, ultimately looking at the statistics because they don't lie. Um, you, you know, standard deviation of what you've done will ultimately be what you will do plus the, that, um, you know, that, that, that growth component. How have you seen um, kind of the, the talent needs for your agency change or the demands of clients? I'm curious if, if um, there's different things you're thinking about as you, as you think about the types of resources you need as you grow. Um, yes, I mean, uh, it's process is key. So um, uh, optimizing, there's a lot of tools out there. It is very overwhelming, but um, doing your best to research, um, spend more time reading about the tool, reading about how to optimize each tool. If AI can help their rate, you can ask AI how to help optimize the tool. Um, but ultimately not rely on um, on AI um, in full and still ultimately make the best decision for your business and the business needs, um, I think is fundamental. Well, last question on our end, are there any specific milestones or initiatives on DDNYC's horizon that you're particularly excited about? May is a big year for us. It's always a big year for, for, um, for DDNYC. Uh, as uh, last year, we'll be doing the Miss Foundation um, Gala, Award Gala in May. It's on May 14th. Um, we're also launching a rebrand for a um, America's oldest prosthetics manufacturer, Willowood. Uh, we've already done a um, part launch of this brand um, at multiple conventions uh, in the U.S., we're doing another convention on Leipzig also in May, and that's going to be the, the final completion of, of their um, multiple hundred page site that we're going to be releasing. So it also happens to be on May 14 is when their trade show in, in Germany is taking place. Uh, We've, uh, I should say, we also designed the the full showroom and the the space, um, the trade shows, all the U.S. shows and the, and the European show. And uh, last but not least, very very excited for VTS Accelerate, which is one of the largest CRE conferences um, globally. And uh, we're doing the keynote design for for the CEO and the CPO there, also in May. <laughs> Wow, it sounds like you have a busy few months ahead, uh, but all very exciting initiatives. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, thank you again for joining us today, Angelica. For any other agencies and businesses out there looking to elevate their brand presence and credibility, joining Clutch's certification program. We love to celebrate other women-owned businesses such as Angelica's could be a real significant step forward. So we hope that Angelica's journey inspires you and to explore how some recognitions and strategic growth plans can 
empower your business to thrive. So thank you again, Angelica, for sharing your insights and experience with us. Thank you very much, Katie.